Thanks for staying with us. All right, so I'm going to go to Damola who has a question. Go ahead, Damola, please. Right, so considering, back to uh, the you know, issue of minimum wage, considering the um, size of the civil service, if the minimum wage is increased, do you think it would lead to loss of jobs if the government cannot afford to pay everyone? Can I even add to that question? Because we know that even within the civil service, there are lots of people who have been earning salaries for years without doing any job. You know, we have people who have been working in the refineries. They've not sacked them. People working on that, they made the Ministry of is it, um, Solid Minerals. These are people that, for the most part, many of these ministries haven't really been functional. But they've been earning salaries and still bloating up our... So if we now increase the salaries, is that not even more detrimental to, our, um, to the cost of, uh, of governance? Yeah. Uh, you see, like uh, we earlier mentioned, that uh, coming up with... Uh, you know, agitation regarding this uh, salary increase. It's a good, in every society, people will want to get something better. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a uh, normal thing. But uh, considering the position and considering the, where we are in the country, uh, that uh, 200,000 is not feasible. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that uh, uh, if it's being presented to the government, I'm not too sure if the government will be able to go uh, beyond 50% of that uh, amount presently, I'm not too sure if the government, you know, because other things will have to be taken care of. And uh, our, our dependence on uh, 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 petrol, uh, petroleum is uh, causing a lot of things. And that is why you see today that uh, at least... One would expect that uh, our earnings from that end should have, uh, you know, changed, you know, the outlook of Nigeria today. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, you know, other issues, corruption and uh, related uh, issues have not helped matter. Mm -hmm. And uh, the government, has, the present government has a lot to do. The present federal government did have a lot to do. And as a matter of fact, uh, I will only say that uh, uh, we, we have to be patient a bit. Mm. Because uh, we cannot expect the result to be instantaneous. Let's, you know, okay. uh, say, uh, give uh, a little time. Okay. Let's say maybe a couple of weeks, months, and let's see. Right. Not just say, oh, it won't work. We are hopeful that it's going to work. Okay, let me take this call from David. I'll come to Mary. David, thanks for calling. Morning. You're live. Good morning, Adam. Morning. Yeah, please, tell us what is going on now. What our guest is saying is very right. Give the government everything in place. Even the proposal that they gave up to them of 200,000, if they should put it in 100,000, everyone will be living fine. And if the BLT board, if they can reduce the price, rent, food, put everything in place, then everything will be good. Even if they pay several thousand, 200,000, if everything is not put in place, the money will not be rich, and people will still be complaining and complaining and complaining. And they should also remember that it's everybody that is civil servant. Thank you very much, David. You're right. Okay. So, you know, I'm quite also intrigued that Nigerians are not jumping on this 200 thousand dollars because I was going to Naira. Do, Naira. Uh, Naira sorry <laughs> I was going to pull on my small economics um, background as, and say that usually if if you were to do something like that just inject that amount of money as wages into the economy the, it will, things will go crazy first of all prices of sure? goods and services will go up you know, what we're trying to avoid, we'll find ourselves we'll deeply be into it. Yes, yeah, so I would like for you to explain to Nigerians who may think, oh, these people just don't want us to lounge or to have money in our pockets. They, you know, they're, they're hating on what they think NLC may be proposing, but 
could you explain to Nigerians how this can negatively impact us? Yeah. Uh, I want to say categorically that uh, when you agitate for much money, you are already devalue your money mm. indirectly. Mm. You are devaluing your currency. And look at what is happening today. Every day we talk about, uh, you know, exchange rates. And at times you see this thing is a, is a long term uh, a problem. Let me, let me say that uh, we will be operating two markets. And uh, when this government came to power, they said, no, let us. Uh, and uh, the strength of the middlemen are what is killing the country. Hmm. It's not that, uh, the, you know, it's, uh, they are in majority. And uh, the idea of arbitrage is something that they have been enjoying. Mm. And as a matter of fact, they will want it to stop mm, because they don't have a, the government will have to do something about that. Mm. That's one. Number two, talking about uh, what uh, uh, the salary impact will have. You know, a lot, a lot. I want to start by saying that uh, when there is inflation, a lot of things will happen. The value, the welfare of everyone is being, uh, you know, brought down. Uh, brought down. Mm -hmm. And not only that, some of our local, you know, uh, factories, you know, will be less competitive mm. because you are helping the imported goods in a way because uh, they won't be able to cope. Yeah. The cottage factories we have cannot face the challenges because of cost. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, when there's a cost push inflation, mm. you see people who have to be laid off and a host of other All right. consequences. All right, let me take this call. Mano has been holding for a minute. Good morning, Mano. I'm sorry for keeping you, Mano. I apologize. Okay. All right, please let me um, put this question to you. This morning, I took the story from Pastor Tudibakari, mm. who is also involved in politics, talking about the way he felt the government should have addressed the corruption challenges. He was accusing the president of um, his act uh, that his actions is killing Nigerians and not corruption, and that he should have gone for the big corporations that were involved in racketeering, that the, the one of um, um, the, uh, taking advantage of the arbitrage mm. in dollar. And many people have made a lot of money from it, and also facing the, those that took advantage of the subsidy to inflate the cost. And it seemed like that was the obvious thing that should have been done, but it wasn't. Do you th how do you think the present government could have addressed that particular um, part of the situation, Sorry, which yeah. is dealing with the corruption in the system, as opposed to pushing it off into um, having Nigerians to deal with the ch challenge? Yeah, uh, maybe I overheard uh, somewhere when uh, Pastor Bakari was making the... You see, uh, sorry to say, with due respect to uh, the pastor, mm. talk is sweet. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, when, when you are not there, you don't know mm. the enormity of what is on the head of those in government. Mm. And uh, when you uh, say some of these things, your followers are, you know, uh, you know, they say, yes, that's the way it should be. You know, we ask ourselves, you know, do they follow the real trend in uh, economic uh, policies? There is no carpet law that will make, you know, the government to deal with everything at the same time, everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a procedural, you know, uh, method that you take one step at a time. Mm. And if you are facing everything, you know, you are not doing anything. So to say that, uh, uh, go and arrest this, go and jail this, you know, it's not the immediate solution. Mm. You must get your findings. You must be convinced that actually these people perpetrated that fraud and to what capacity. So it's not just uh, waking up, oh, it's a thief. Somebody used to one error. It's a thief. And another person sold one million. It's a thief. 
So, you, you know, you must do the uh, investigation first. Okay. And I think that is what the government is trying to do. I think I have another caller. Good morning. Thanks for calling. I do apologize. I don't know what's going on with the phone lines. I only had a question for you. Right. So what strategies, because since the uh, exception of this, you know, minimum wage increase or cost of living going high, the government has been saying that they do not have enough money, you know, to cater to, but then they would look into, they would review it. Mm. What strategies, what feasible strategies can you recommend to the government to help them, you know, find ways to raise the money to cushion this, uh, to respond to this minimum wage issue? Yeah, uh, there are so many uh, issues and uh, many ways by which the government can address some of these things. You see, uh, the cost of uh, governance is too heavy. It's, uh, it's a known fact. In uh, fact, uh, look at uh, uh, a legislator who has uh, over 100 uh, advisors, special advisors. Then you ask yourself, how do you address that? And what will be there? You know, you will see that some of the activities and the job of those uh, 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 assistants will be overlapping. Mm -hmm. There's no way you have 101 uh, support uh, staff. Their job will be overlapped. Uh, in another land and climb, you don't encourage uh, that. And that is one. Number two, you see, uh, there must be a kind of simple restructuring in the country. You know, the center is too heavy. Mm -hmm. Heavy. And the states, you know, you know, are taken from the federal government. You know, if we restructure in a way, the state will be bold enough to take more and be able to help, you know, the situation. But everything is coming from the center too. And that is a big problem. So the government will have to restructure. It might not be a total one, but on the average, some uh, areas will have to be, you know, uh, given out to the state to carry out. And uh, aside from that, the government will have to do a lot of uh, uh, enumeration. Because uh, if they say the palliative is going, how many of us are sure of those who will take the, the palliative? You know, we don't have record. And uh, the, the agents in between the government and the people are the ones that will serve the money. Mm. It might not reach right. them. Okay. Right. Okay, so in response to, you know, where you started uh, the yeah. conversation from about the government spending so much, mm. but there are some who also argue that government is the highest employer of labor and government needs to spend to improve productivity. So how do you achieve that balance in ensuring that you are, you know, improving productivity and also managing costs? And that is about our society. In uh, other words, Government uh, will not bother, you know, employing people uh, like that. We allow the if industries uh, to grow, you know, make a create a enable environment for them. And uh, these people are the people that will take care of the economy. Here, you know, sorry to say, in Nigeria, our, um, you know, secondary uh, uh, state is almost uh, excluded. That is production level, where we say we manufacture, we do this. You will see that we are in between extraction and tertiary uh, position. We deal mostly to buy and selling. But in the manufacturing sector, go to right. China. And that is why, the, with, with the population, they are not really complaining about, of, uh, about uh, unemployment. We have to wrap up now. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. It was a pleasure having you. On the show today, we'll be speaking with the senior lecturer, Department of Economics, uh, University of Lagos, um, um, lecturer Dr. Babatokwe Oguni. Thank you. Good to have you. Thank you for coming. That is all we can take on today's show. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Thank you.